Attention! Americans have the freedom of choice, and your choice for professional wrestling should be the American Wrestling Federation. wrestling action for you tonight. My name is Mick Carson, along with my co-host, the venerable Terry Taylor. Thank you, I think. We are going to see Mr. Hughes in action. The tournament single elimination for the AWF Heavyweight Championship. First round, you're going to see Tommy Rich against Tony Atlas. You're also going to see Coco Beware versus Nails, and also Sergeant Slaughter in action. To the ring we go with our announcer, Bill Anderson. Ladies and gentlemen, this next contest is scheduled for three rounds. Introducing first from the island of Samoa, weighing 296 pounds, the Superfly! All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard with the American Wrestling Federation. And there is the monster from Samoa, the Superfly, and Terry Taylor. An interesting week last week, the situation involving Mr. Hughes and Hurricane. Yeah, I was in the back and I saw Hurricane get loaded onto the stretcher, then into the ambulance. His son was back there in the locker room area, crying his eyes out. First, the manager. And as a result, ladies and gentlemen, as we begin the American Here Wrestling Federation Kansas Championship City, Tournament, three, three, instead of seeing Hurricane in action tonight, Take a look at this man coming out right now, the roughneck himself, by chicanery, by hooker crook. Here he is in the tournament, Mr. Hughes. Yeah, you see him with Sheik Adnan LKC. Hughes formed and shaped his own destiny. He came out there, he destroyed Hurricane from behind the back. They bought some other man off. I'll tell you, money talks, this guy Sheik. I don't like the way he operates, but he's very successful. And Mr. Hughes, I mean, we're in the first round of the tournament. First round goes three rounds. Second round or the semifinal goes six rounds. And the finals go 12. And the rules are over the top rope, disqualification. Touch the referee, disqualification. If there is a tie, if it goes to time limit, then the referee has a scorecard and determines the winner only in the American Wrestling Federation. All right, look at that now. She can not LKC on the ring apron, distracted the referee, and Mr. Hughes seizes the opportunity, and he is unloading on Superfly from the get-go. And Terry, Superfly comes to the ring with a knee brace, and Hughes stopping on the brace, and now works on the throat. Yeah, I'll tell you, in this business, professional wrestling, American Wrestling Federation, you're going to get hurt. But putting a brace on an injury is almost like putting a bullseye on yourself. Put it on the other leg, Superfly, he'll attack it, you'll protect the bad leg. And you've got to believe that a man like Mr. Hughes, of all people, he's like a shark. If he smells blood, he's going right after you. And you can tell immediately, Superfly is in dire straits. He's limping on that leg. He's in tough shape already. Yeah, he covers up that leg. Hughes kick hits him in the face. Covers up the face, he gets kicked in the knee. Very bad when you're fighting a battle on two fronts. And right there also, when you have Sheik Adnan LKC on the outside distracted. Superfly hadn't even got out of the starting blocks. Excuse Boy, me. he sure didn't. And there's a big headbutt by Hughes, but it didn't seem to phase the Samoan. And a second shot. And Hughes taking a little bit of back that time. There's three ineffectual headbutts. And the Samoan Superfly with a shot of his own to the midsection. He's trying to mount an offense off, but Hughes with a rake to the eyes. Oh! Agility by a 335 pound man. Up in the air, bang with an elbow. Got the leg hook too. He got him. What do you know about that, ladies and gentlemen? I am absolutely shocked. With relative ease, Mr. Hughes scores the victory over the Superfly. And for heaven's sakes, as you said, Terry, wearing that knee brace into the ring, what a 
mistake. He hits him right there. Now watch that knee buckle when he hits him in the back of the neck. Double damage right there. Down he goes on that bad knee. Q seizes the opportunity, kicking, stomping, working on that injured leg. Shows the toughness of the Superfly, and Hughes, boom, up in the air, drops that tremendous elbow. This guy has no morals. How low will he go? Attacking a man from behind, and then wins right here, advancing to the semifinals. Well, like it or not, he does continue on, and right now, ladies and gentlemen, let's toss it to our friend Ken Resnick, who has caught up with the roughneck, Mr. Hughes. A very impressive win for Mr. Hughes. Now, for those of you that were with us last week, you saw Mr. Hughes seriously injure Hurricane. In fact, Hurricane still hospitalized. Whether or not he wrestles again, still up in the air. Nonetheless, Mr. Hughes, I don't agree with how you got into the tournament, but again, very impressive win over Superfly. That's right, just like I try to tell all these boys around this part of town who I am, the roughneck, Mr. Hughes, the Bucks, as they say in New York City. You see, don't nobody... I mean, nobody has ever survived that sidewalk slam. I am the roughneck, the man from the hood, and you don't forget it. Well, Mr. Hughes, you've got a very tough task. Now you will be drawing in the second round the winner of the match between Hercules and Tito Santana. You see, it doesn't matter to me. It makes no difference to me. Win, lose, or draw, I don't care. Anybody that wants to deal with me will go down with the sidewalk slam. <laughs> Well, you talk about a man who means business in Mr. Hughes. Very devastating. He's got to be one of the favorites early on, Terry. Yeah, if you go by intensity and aggressiveness, he sure is. You talk about intense and aggressive. Wait till you see this match. I can't wait. Well, here's the ultimate destroyer. We know very little about this man. He'll give you no information. He'll shove you aside if you try to talk to him. Not me. Well, maybe not you. And his opponent is about to make his way to the ring. Nobody in the sport has the following for so many years as Sergeant Slaughter, America's hero. Get up and salute. Come on, Terry. All righty then. Up I am. Carsh, I'd have you drop and give me 20 push-ups, but I know you can't do it. We only have an hour show. We got Sergeant Slaughter out here, a true patriot, a great American, handing out stars and stripes to flags to everybody here in attendance. Arena. The fans love this guy, and everybody loves the American Wrestling Federation. The wrestling of the 21st century. Innovation. A round system. We have a president, Paul Zapperstein, who's Alperstein. That's what I said. He said he's going to enforce the rules. He's going to keep his eyes open. He's going to keep his eyes peeled, make sure that he's going to have a tournament that's run right down the middle. No cheating, no chicanery. He's going to have his hands full with guys like Mr. Hughes. Oh, absolutely. No doubt about that. You look at the lineup in this tournament, and it is really something. Elferstein is going to have his hands full as the Sarge continues to parade around the ring. What a tremendously popular individual this is in Sergeant Slaughter. You talk about favorites in the tournament. This could be your man right here. Yeah, he is. He's got that Marine training. He's been a drill instructor. He's been all over the world. Probably the most famous professional wrestler in all the world. And we have him right here in the American Wrestling Federation. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to come back for the start of this one. The Sarge and the Ultimate Destroyer. Stay with us, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And what a matchup this promises to be. Sergeant Slaughter, America's hero, one-on-one -on -one with the ultimate destroyer, the Masked Man. You talk about where's the beef in this one, Terry. Two huge, rugged professional wrestlers in there right now. Yeah, you got the ultimate destroyer. Looks to be about 290. Sergeant Slaughter, 310 pounds. Trimmed down, I'll have you know. Got his hair high and tight. Well, kind of high and real tight. Oh. Well, I can say that back here because what are you going to do, tell on me? It's very possible. I knew that. Look at that series of moves by the Sarge. Very, very agile for a big man. And the ultimate destroyer seeks the safety of the ring ropes right away. Your favorite referee in there right now, Gary Grunke. Grunke. He's wonderful. I like old Gary Grunke. He looks like a troll. wonder what breaks he came out from under. Listen to these fans picking up that chant of USA as they do wherever Sergeant Slaughter appears. What a tremendously popular individual. And again, if you're going to pick a winner, a potential winner for this tournament, how do you bet against Sergeant Slaughter? Well, it's against the law to bet, Cars. 
So I wouldn't bet, the, but if I had to wager, I would wager on the Sarge. How can you bet against him? Former World Heavyweight Champion. Well, a tremendous athlete, and we don't want to sell the Ultimate Destroyer short either. We've seen this man a few times in the American Wrestling Federation, and he is very, very tough indeed, very unpredictable, and also quite agile for a man his size. Yeah, we got super heavyweights in here. There are no lightweights, and I think it's going to be a great contest. Sarge has got to prove himself, though. He's got to get through the Ultimate Destroyer. Everything we've said goes for naught. Absolutely. Referee calling for the break. Ultimate Destroyer, slow to break, and over the top. Now, here's the situation. Clearly, it was the Ultimate Destroyer's own momentum. Hey, look at this girl. She's ready to attack you. Yeah, she was. She was ready to pounce. It was the Ultimate Destroyer's own momentum that threw him over the top rope. Will you let me get a word in here since I'm the analyst? Oh. What happened was he threw the punch. Sergeant Slaughter could have backdropped him, but chose not to. He just got out of the way. The momentum took him over. And what's he doing? He's out of the oh, come he on. the flag. You don't do that to some old oh, man, Sergeant Slaughter. He's motivated anyway. Good ball over the top. And you talk about motivation indeed. The Sarge with the body slam into that hip toss. And the ultimate destroyer. Oh, he decides to hit the safety of the ringside floor there. Boy, well, the Sarge saw that flag broken in half by the ultimate oh, destroyer. Oh, look at this. Now he's out on the floor. Oh, I thought he was going after the ultimate But now, is this guy leaving? Well, it's very possible. He might want to do that at this juncture. He really lit a fire under the Sarge by breaking that flag. And the Ultimate Destroyer indeed has paid the price here. Referee Gary Gronke tells Sarge back off, give the man an opportunity to get back into the ring. What a tremendous matchup this is. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, the American Wrestling Federation always the very best in professional wrestling. Oh! Shot. Yeah, and this is in the tournament. I mean, everybody in this, uh-oh, trying to advance, trying to get to the semifinals. I mean, let's make put the stakes where they really are. This is a very important match to both men. Both guys want to advance. I know I do. I want to see the winner. I want to see the new first American Wrestling Federation champion. Oh, Ultimate Destroyer telegraphed that one a little bit. Sarge able to roll out of the way. We are under the half-minute mark in this round. Sarge takes him down. Slaughter Cannon. Backs him into the corner now. The time is waiting in this round. Sarge Ooh. trying to put him away in another cannon. See that great cam in the corner? He lines him up. He's going for his finishing maneuver. This is the Cobra Clutch. Is this there is enough time, the title. Too. Is there enough time remaining in this round? Or is the Destroyer going to be able to hang on? And he does. Well, you talk about saved by the bell. Yeah, but will Slaughter let go? See, when you get a man in this position, you can't just turn it off. When you're a competitor, when you're an athlete, you can't just turn it off. That's a sportsman right there. And speaking of sportsmen, let's go to my favorite segment, the Warrior Corner. <laughs> I'm not one to say it, but I told you so, Daddy. Sir Oliver Humperdinck did his job. Now I got to go out there and do my job. I knew I'd make the tournament, but all of a sudden, I found out I got this big, strong Johnny Gun kid. Well, let me tell you something, Johnny Gun. You're stepping in the ring against the cowboy. <laughs> You're going to be shooting blanks, son. Well, a very confident cowboy, Bob Orton Jr., a part of this tournament. And I've got to tell you, I am absolutely amazed that the Ultimate Destroyer was able to survive that first round. Not only the Cobra Clutch, but two slaughter cannons. You don't see that very often. Yeah, but look at him. Well, he has, he's been laying down the whole one-minute rest period. Only in the American Wrestling Federation do you have rounds, four minutes long each with a one-minute rest period. He needs a month vacation instead of four minutes, or one minute, excuse me. Well, the referee and the crowd counting on the Ultimate Destroyer here. This is very interesting indeed. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, That's and it. that is it. Wow. He did not beat the 10 count, just as we said that he escaped the Cobra Clutch and two slaughter cannons. I guess he didn't escape anything. He's out of here. Yeah, he couldn't answer the bell. Sergeant Slaughter, all the kids love it. Look at the flags going crazy everywhere. I kind of dig the guy myself. This is how he did it. The flag was broken. Great hip lock takeover there. Follows it up with a body slam. 290 pounds getting slammed into the mat. 
Falls up. Boom! Weight oh. cam right there. Now here comes the slaughter cannon. Bang! Right across the throat. Takes the big man down. Right here you see him. He gets him right into Cobra Clutch. Nobody gets out of that, including somebody named Karsh. Oh, I guarantee I wouldn't get out of that. I wouldn't get into the ring with the Sarge either. What a tremendous victory. The damage was done even in the waning seconds of that round. And I'll tell you, you talk about popular. Take a look right there. The youngsters of this country and literally all over the world absolutely adore Sergeant Slaughter. Get those crumb snatchers out of the ring. That's only for professional athletes. That looks like a battle royal at the Taylor Failure reunion. Oh, stop it for heaven's sakes. Ladies and gentlemen, you take a look at Sergeant Slaughter. And this is the situation everywhere this man appears. He is absolutely idolized. And look at these kids. They love the Sarge. A true patriot. What an American. Yeah, I hate to say it, but I will. This guy is a true inspiration to children. He's out there. He's got him in the ring. They're all having a great time. Sergeant Slaughter, there's only one of him. And let's go to Ken Resnick. He's caught up with the Sarge. Much to the delight of the throngs here, Sergeant Slaughter winning his first match in the American Wrestling Federation Tournament. You know, Sarge, we've talked about the round system, but I think from the destroyer standpoint, it could have been a five-minute rest. Once the Cobra Clutch goes on, you can turn out the lights. Well, you never know when that uh, round is going to be up unless you've got a clock in your mind. And I put the Cobra Clutch on him, and the bell rang. Uh, we had the one-minute break, and, of course, once you get in the Cobra Clutch, Nobody gets Turn up. Turn out the lights, the party's over. Sarge, yeah. now you're going to be facing the winner of Luscious Tommy Rich and Tony Atlas. No easy task. No, I don't know uh, which one I want to go against. Uh, you got uh, Tony Atlas, got a big, strong body. Uh, that might be a hard guy to get the uh, Cobra Clutch on. But then you got Tommy Rich, uh, Luscious Tommy Rich. He's got his manager, Rico Suave. I'll take on either one. You'll need eyes in the back of your head. Sarge, I'll let you get going. I know you want to. All Get right. a chance to watch that match. And remember, that's still coming up. Tony Atlas, Tommy Rich. All right, ladies and gentlemen, back we are. Here's our ring announcer, Billy Anderson. Ladies and gentlemen, this next contest is scheduled for three rounds. Introducing first, the manager, Rico Suave. Oh, no. He represents from Nashville, Tennessee, weighing 247 pounds. Luscious Tommy Rich. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there he is, and that man certainly fills up a television screen. I thought Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall. Oh, man. Rico Suave. He better not be talking about himself. He represents Luscious Tommy Rich, certainly one of the leading contenders in this championship tournament. This is the second former world heavyweight champion we've seen in this tournament. Does that tell you how important it is and the credentials that these athletes are bringing to the table? Oh, absolutely it does. If we could get him to get out of the way for a minute. Luscious Tommy Rich, certainly an attitude change over the years. No question about that. Yeah. 280 pounds. Tony! And ladies and gentlemen, here is the opponent for Tommy Rich, and would you look at the guns on that man. Mr. USA, Tony Atlas, one of the most popular stars in all of professional wrestling, and what a nice guy, inside and outside the ring. This is a great competitor. Thank goodness. The only reason his arms don't look the 23 inches they are is because of that barrel chest of his. I got the furniture disease, chest falling into my drawers. This guy got it all. What a chest, what a set of arms. Former Mr. USA, but as far as I'm concerned, still Mr. USA, Tony Atlas, going against Tommy Rich, former heavyweight champion of the world, Jesse Hernandez, the referee in charge. And you know, I'll tell you something, if you're gonna pick a winner in this one, you can't pick a winner in this one. You talk about a, a toss-up, two tremendously gifted athletes in that ring, Luscious Tommy Rich, as you said, former heavyweight champion. And over the years, we have seen this man evolve when he first got into this profession, the clean scientific style. Now that rule book is out the window and aligning himself with the likes of Rico Suave. Yeah, just when you think a guy can't go any lower, Tommy Rich sets a new standard. Oh. Look at the strength in Tony Atlas. Tommy Rich, though, has been wrestling guys that were always bigger than him, and he always found a way to win. Can he still do it with Rico Suave in his corner? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you something. He certainly is not going to win if he tries to match strength. 
in power with Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. He better try to finesse the big man, or this one's over. And again, Tony Atlas shoves him all the way across the ring. Yeah, but you know, Tony Atlas has always got to be looking out the corner of his eye to see what Rico Suave is doing. This guy is a pain. And I mean, these guys at one time, Tony Atlas and Tommy Rich were heavyweight tag team champions of the world. This was a while ago, but they do have a history. They were friends at one time and very successful as a tag team. Now how things change. Well, certainly, and obviously then they know each other inside and outside, but the Tommy Rich that Tony Atlas knew at one time Gone. is not the Tommy Rich that we see there extending his hand in friendship and sportsmanship. I don't buy this at all. Oh, look at Atlas now. He's got that vice-like grip on the hand of Tommy Rich, who seeks the safety of the ring ropes. Yeah, but you see Tony Atlas let go. Well, that's a sportsman for you. Yeah, he really is. Can you believe how exciting this tournament is? Single elimination. You've got these three rounds to start the first series. So not the semifinals, but the first series of uh, matches is only three rounds. Then it goes to six in the semifinals. Everybody here wants to get into that finals to wrestle for the American Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Championship. And ladies and gentlemen, the cards and the letters, the phone calls coming into the offices of the American Wrestling Federation. The wrestling public, the fans absolutely love what they're seeing and the excitement over this tournament is far and wide and I'm delighted to be a part of it. And as you said, how important, single elimination. You make a mistake in your history. Yeah, that's right. Everybody wants to advance and there's no room to make a mistake here. Jesse Hernandez has got the pressure on him too. He wants to see a winner because, I mean, careers can be made or broken in this tournament if he has to make a final decision if there is a time limit draw. Boy, how would you like to be luscious Tommy Rich right now and have Tony Atlas stretching your arm out about another nine feet? Yeah, well, Tony Atlas likes feet in his face, from what I understand. Big, tough guy, doesn't mind getting kicked in the face. Whatever it takes to get to the semifinals. Oh, and there he is again. You know, I really would like to request of the crew that they keep the camera off Rico Suave, at least before I take a Tums or something, for heaven's <laughs> sakes. Why? I always heard that you two are close, dear, personal friends. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we sure are. Great camera work once again, ladies and gentlemen, here in the American Wrestling Federation. Referee Jesse Hernandez asking Tommy Rich if he wants to call it a night as we're under a half a minute in the opening round. I guarantee you, you have to just about decapitate Tommy Rich before he'll call it quits. Yeah, I think everybody feels that way. See the way Tony Atlas has got that wrist secured? He's got the wrist bent back. Then he's pushing against the shoulder and head. And right there, Tommy Rich, flat of the foot is legal. That punch to the ear was not. But see him showing the, result, the effects of that arm hold. Still showing that left arm hasn't got 100% capacity. And as the round comes to a close, neither man with a clear advantage. Tommy Rich with the choke hold in the waning seconds of the opening round. And again, Terry, as we said, it's a column so far. Yeah, so far. We're going to utilize your speed. We're going to utilize your speed and quickness. Speed and quickness. What does Rico Suave know about speed and quickness? <laughs> Have you ever seen him in front of a plate of spaghetti? Speed and quickness. Now I understand. Tony Atlas right there showing the effects of that choke hold. I'll tell you, there's a lot of things going on. There'll be no choking because we have a warrior's corner. Let's go to it right now. You know, the American Wrestling Federation has everything that Chris Adams loves. Real wrestling, fantastic competition, and the round system. And next week, Warlord, you're a big man. But Chris Adams has a big spirit. And I'm coming for you. Well, there's a man certainly acclimated to the round system. And gentlemen, Chris Adams, and look at Tommy Rich. He unloaded on Tony Atlas to start this round. Oh, oh hammers him again. Yeah, Tommy Rich, did you see him waiting till the bell rang to attack? But he knows that Alferstein, your favorite Zapperstein, excuse me, is watching this, and it makes the referee's job easy. Because you know, if guys mess up, they know the president is going to back up the referee's decision. Have a little respect, please, for President Paul Alferstein. That's what I have, a little respect. Oh, stop it. Oh, look Go at him, Tony. Oh, right to the mush of luscious Tommy Rich, and there's Ooh. that big headbutt. And see, he goes right over there to Rico Suave, keeps him in his vision. Off the second rope, another oh. headbutt. Oh, wow. All the way across the ring and out on the floor. Luscious 
here's Tommy Rich, and here's Suave with a little condolence call as he sees his man being pummeled right now. Did you see the, the courage of Rico Suave? Oh. He sees Tony Atlas and takes off. Real, real courageous. Wait a second now. Ladies and gentlemen, in for the cover. That is it. Now, I'm not sure that our camera picked it up, but Rico Suave reached into the ring and grabbed the ankle of Mr. USA Tony Atlas. The momentum sent it backwards. Tommy Rich on top for the cover. Terry, what a miscarriage of justice here. Look at Tony Atlas' patient. He knows something's not right. We see right there in all his regalia, luscious Tommy Rich. What a handsome man. Tony Atlas with a body like my partner in broadcast, excellent face, Karsh. Oh, you. Then he grabs him in a headlock, which could be a finishing maneuver with the size of those arms. Tommy Rich tickling the top of his head, trying to get out. And now we have Tony hanging off for dear life. Now here goes the miscarriage of justice. Let's see if the camera picks it up on the instant replay. Well, look at Suave now. He has certainly looked at the vicinity of Tony Atlas. There he moved in. Boom, oh. Tony Atlas right on top. Now see this, watch this ankle when Tony gets ready to kick out. Boom, that ankle right there, Rico Suave grabs it, and that is the difference in this match. A win for Luscious Tommy, he advances to the semifinals. Well, miscarriage of justice or not, as you said, there's your winner, Luscious Tommy Rich. Let's toss it to our friend Ken Resnick. I had the opportunity of watching that match with the other member of the Rico Suave family, Greg DeHammer Valentine. Greg, I know you're very pleased. Your other family member is victorious. What a great victory over Tony Atlas. He's a great wrestler in his own right. Probably the biggest arms in professional wrestling. But my man, luscious Tommy Rich, with his wrestling know-how. He's not a big man, you understand? But you don't have to be a big man to be in a family. What we really want besides just brawn, we want brains. And that's why Greg DeHama Valentine's in the family. And next week, by the way, first round of the tournament, I'm going to have the young lion, Jimmy Powers. And I tell you what, I'm going to give him the wrestling lesson of his life. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations, Rico, baby. You know something? Yeah. You hit it right on the head. Tony Atlas, a big, strong man. But you know something? All it takes in this world is a little bit of brains. And baby, I got him. And luscious. Has the moves, you know what I'm saying? Well, it's certainly not going to get any easier. Your opponent in the quarterfinals, none other than Sergeant Slaughter. Sergeant Slaughter, the all-American man. You know, I'm not saying that any man that has to go out and shake little kids' hands and pat them on the back, that's fine with me. But what I'm talking about is the nitty-gritty, getting down on the mat, wrestling and seeing who can go. So Sergeant Slaughter, you bring all of your little sergeants out there because every one of them ain't going to help you when I get through with you. Because like I said, we're climbing that ladder for that title. And right now you're standing in the way, Slaughter. So you get all your little redneck buddies and bring them down. But I don't think they're going to help him against the family. Well, you know something, I, gotta, I, I, I heard, and I don't know if this is the truth, but I don't think Slaughter's a, a, a draft doctor, isn't he? Oh, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what they are, the Rico Suave fam. But I can't help but wonder what would happen if it was Luscious Tommy and Greg the Hammer later on in the tournament against one another. It'd be a beautiful thing to watch because you'd be watching two of the most gorgeous, two of the most technical men on earth, baby. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. What an interview we heard just a moment ago with Rico Suave and company. Weighing 307 pounds, nailed! Oh, boy, I'll tell you something, Terry, as you look over the roster of wrestling stars in this championship tournament, is there anyone more frightening than the man you're looking at right now in nails? Uh, I don't know. If you get out from behind me, hey. I'll tell you something. This is a scary, scary man. He absolutely, and I mean this sincerely, relishes the thought of getting into the ring and crippling somebody. Not just winning a match, putting his opponent out for life. Life sentence. 30 pounds. He is the Birdman. All Coco right. that monster 
Walters in the ring waiting for only him. I think I spent a lot of time out there doing that. I, I oh, think oh, I man. would too. The man's expression never changes. The only difference is that every once in a while, there's a little more drool, a little more salivating. He is absolutely treacherous in that ring. Look at this. He glares right through his opponent, and he has not the least bit impressed with the dancing right now of the Birdman Coco Beware. Well, he didn't come here to dance. He came here to wrestle. He wants to advance in the semifinals. Man, he oh. just paid his fine. This guy is unbelievable. Speaking of unbelievable, let's go to a Warriors corner right this second. <laughs> Gentlemen, Chris Adams, lucky you. I thought you're my first opponent. Well, oh, wait till you step in the ring against the Warlord, because you're going to find out just how powerful I am and just how bad pain can feel. And in the end, I will be the winner, and I will go all the way to the end and be the new champion of the AWF. <laughs> well, there's a powerful man in his own right in the Warlord, certainly a force to be reckoned with. But back to the action in the ring. Nails continues the assault on the Birdman, who mounts that second row crossbody. He got it down. One, two. Oh, man, I'll tell you, that would have been a major upset. Oh, no. Right over the top, and that's it. Automatic disqualification, Terry. That is it. Yeah, but uh-oh, that isn't it. Oh, no. Coco advances, but right here, will he be able to if this guy Nails gets his hands on him? He is the most dangerous man in professional wrestling on the outside of the ring. in the American Wrestling Federation Championship. He certainly didn't show that tonight. Once again, he went right after Coco Beware. He went berserk after he had already been disqualified. He's history for the tournament, and thank goodness for the presence of Mr. USA Tony Atlas. At Coco Beware, bottom line, advances to the semifinals. We have Coco advancing Sergeant Slaughter, Tommy Rich, and we also have Tito Santana, winners this week. And there he goes, finally, leaving the ring area, Nails. And let's take another look, Terry. Beautiful crossbody, the smaller man using his greater skills. Down goes the Redwood, and right there, seeing that he's in trouble, Nails chucks him over the top rope, which makes Coco advance, knocks Nails out of the tournament, and right there you see him eyeing Frankie. I guess it's from one bird to another, Jailbird. Well, Frankie could have easily been on a pillow. Ladies and gentlemen, let's send it to our broadcast colleague, Ken Resnick. There's no question, wrestling fans certainly very glad to see Coco Beware now advance into the second round of this first ever American Wrestling Federation tournament, Tito Santana, to crown the new champion. But talking about this tournament, my friend, if any wrestler had the unluckiest draw coming up next, your first round matchup against none other than Hercules. Now, that's not bad enough by itself. Hercules now managed Tito by Adnan Al-Casey, who you know is capable of anything. 
I know him very well, and I am nervous about this upcoming match against Hercules. Next, Hercules, you and I, I'm nervous enough about that, but what worries me is the Sheik. Everyone knows the Sheik. He does not give a darn about the rules. And as far as I'm concerned, Hercules is on the same level as the Sheik. No question. So I am nervous about this match. Hey, now wait a minute, Sheik. Hold it, now, Sheik. Sheik, you've got no business if you're going to come in and interrupt this interview. Hey, you're going to let him finish. 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 Get out of here, you guys. Get out of here. Get out of here. Oh. 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 Hey, can we get some help? Oh. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, with the American Wrestling Federation, and what a horrible incident involving Hercules and, of course, Tito Santana. Yeah, well, that's the match that's coming up now. Casey. Yeah. Oh, here's another guy, the Sheik. Diabolical and sinister, and there's no question he plotted that one as we take a look at the Sheik and Hercules. What a... What a horrible attack on Tito Santana just prior to this matchup. Boy, and look at how confident they both look. They know they got one up on Tito. Bottom line is, I know what kind of competitor Tito Santana is. I know how much the American Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Championship means, and he isn't going to let that attack stop him. Wow, well, there's a scary individual and a powerhouse in Hercules, but again, as you said, Tito Santana, guts personified, one of the greatest competitors in all of wrestling, and, and he's not going to be stopped. From Tacuna, Mexico, weighing 239 pounds, Tito Santana! Well, here he is, and Tito certainly looks a little bit worse for wear after that attack in the interview area, but he makes his way to the ring, and you've got to believe, Terry, he's got payback on his mind. I'll tell you, the focus of these athletes is unbelievable. I know if a guy just stomped me right in the boiler, I'd be rolling into that ring attacking. Tito knows it's a job. He knows this is for all the marbles. He's got to get past Hercules to get into the semifinals. He's going about this in a business-like manner, but I know that Latin temper of his is going to come into play. Well, there's no question about that. And again, you talk about wrestlers who are idolized by the fans. It's Tito. Yeah, and if you want to see him live in Cicero Stadium, it's Cicero on the 29th of April and Hammond at the Civic Center on the 30th, you'll see Tito Santana, Johnny Gunn, Chris Adams, both the Powers boys, and Bob Orton Jr. 7.30. It's going to be a weekend bash of the American Wrestling Federation. Be there. Well, professional wrestling is terrific to watch on television, but there's nothing like being at ringside, and I think there's nothing like what you're going to see right now, fireworks, as Tito Santana squares off against Hercules, the American Wrestling Federation Championship Tournament, the talk of the wrestling world. Yeah, collar and elbow lock up there, and look at the tremendous strength of Hercules. It's usually the man that gets his hips the lowest, gets his legs under him, that has the leverage. And Hercules, with Tito had everything right technically, just overpowered him. But Tito has beat guys like this. He's made a career beating bigger men. You know, Terry, I have to wonder, she got on LKC, certainly has confidence in Hercules, but maybe not that much confidence. Maybe he had to figure out hurting Tito Santana prior to the start of this match, gain that advantage. They've got to respect Tito Santana. But I think everybody in the sporting world does. Great double biceps pose there by Hercules, but I hate to say it, Hurt. This is a wrestling match. This isn't a bodybuilding contest. This is the toughest sport in the world. No pads. You're going to have a one-minute rest after your first four-minute round. You got Gary Gronke in there enforcing the rules. He'll have the final say if they go through the time limit. And I'll tell you, Gronke may not be much to look at, but he is a great official, and he makes sure that things are right down the middle because Zapperstein is watching. Alperstein. It's Alperstein and Gary Gronke. What do you mean he's nothing to look at, for heaven's sakes? Very respected official. As Hercules continues with that vice-like side headlock on Tito Santana, Every match is an important match from here on in. Yeah, Hercules got that head kind of low on his chest. Can't get that forearm bone across the, the cheekbone. Great block there by Hercules. Good movement by Tito Santana. Oh. Off the cross body. Isn't that great? Boy, kicked out before a count of one. Picks him up into that body slam. Referee was out of position the first time and again. Scoop into the slam. Santana on fire. And look at Hercules. He's had enough. Boy, 
Jesse Dittino can't follow up though. She had dropped that left arm to protect that side that's hurt. Two big slams took a lot out of him, as it did Hercules. And look at Tito showing the effects of both the match and the attack before. And clearly the strategy employed by Sheik Adnan LKC and Hercules, that sneak attack in the interview area apparently did what it was supposed to do, take away some of the firepower of Tito Santana. But will that be enough? Tito Santana with enough reserve for 20 wrestlers. This could be a long encounter for Hercules. Yeah, that's easy for you to say. You've never been in the ring. Tito Santana's been in there almost as long as Terry Taylor, 15 glorious years. Hercules going for a timeout. Uh-uh, that comes at the end of the first four-minute round. Not when you call it. But he's over there saying, no time. Well, Tito Santana clearly getting frustrated and irritated at the stall tactics of Hercules. But again, in the round system, Terry, that strategy and Hercules Ooh, using wow. that time clock to the hill. Another shot right to the head. But he can't drop the star from Mexico. Tremendous right hands. Oh, he's it. One. No. Boy, sloppy kick out by Hercules, but so much power. And look at that Latin blood. I'm telling you, that temper. Oh, see the strength? Grab those tights, which is illegal. Grunke has no choice. He can't disqualify him. Quick yank right into that turnbuckle. Man, Tito has, every time he's got a little something going, Hercules' strength has told the tale. And you just have to wonder if that attack earlier on hasn't made the difference there. We're under a half a minute now in the opening round. Over the top, sunset flip. He's trying to get the big end. Oh, he drilled him. See, that is the strength of Hercules. Tito's going to have to figure out a way to negate that strength. Hercules is so strong. Great balance there. Tito couldn't get him over. We got eight seconds left. That's his finishing maneuver. He's going to get him with the power bomb. He got it. With two seconds remaining now, Hercules apparently lost track of where he was as far as time is concerned, and Tito is able to escape the round. Well, I'm glad he did because Tito Santana in bad, bad shape. What's going to happen next? Well, ladies and gentlemen, stay with us. The action continues. You're watching the American Wrestling Federation. We're coming right back. Federation Championship Tournament and the start of round two fights Tito Santana still on the mat in a very dazed condition and Hercules now methodically stalking Tito Santana. Yeah, he hit him with that power bomb with three seconds left. He's had a minute to try to get, oh man, try to get back to his feet. Hercules has damaged the central nervous system, driving Tito on the back of his head and then hits him in the jaw, jarring that neck again. Face into the turnbuckle, jarring that face and neck again. Very sound game plan by Hercules. We know, Terry, as we continue on in this tournament, depending on who wins this one, if Hercules happens to defeat Tito Santana, it's very popular, or very possible, rather, that he could go into the next round against Mr. Hughes, another man in Sheik's army. Boy, Tito fighting back for all he's worth. Hercules just cuts it right off. Those are not legal. Gronke telling him, quit punching. Tito Santana, I mean, he's in this match, but you're right. Think of the ramifications. That man right there, Adnan LKC, may have two of his men wrestling each other. It's for the American Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Championship. Who would he side with? Who would he give the money to? I mean, who is the better wrestler in the stable? I mean, that opens up a lot of possibilities. Well, I guarantee you the Sheik really doesn't care as long as one of his men wins the championship and Hercules oh. continues the assault on Tito Santana. I wouldn't spend too much time posturing to this crowd. Not when you're wrestling Tito Santana. Tito can turn it around in the blink of an eye. But look, he, does, he doesn't even put it, hold that left shoulder down. Fundamental, basic mistake by a cocky guy that thinks he's got a superstar in more trouble than he does. Tito has come out of situations like this before. He certainly has it. There's the burrito. burrito. He nailed him right to the side of the jaw. But look it, at that cover. He barely could follow up. Wait a minute now. She put that foot on the rope, Nick. Get him away from that ring apron. Clearly, so oh, wait a minute. Right. Tito grabs the Sheik. Boy, Sheik must be heavy. Pull him up, Tito. Oh, oh. missed. Wait a second now. Now Sheik has grabbed Tito Santana. Look out to, oh, he nailed his own manager. Hercules clocked the Sheik and now Santana on fire. There's a reversal. He ducks the clothesline. Second burrito.
and gentlemen, you talk about a term of events. Take it, Terry, take it from here. Bing, bang, boom, it went back and forth. Yes, it did. Burrito right there. That was a turning point. After she got nine out, KC had interjected himself. Tito gets the win. Unbelievable. He's going against Mr. Hughes in the next round. It doesn't get any easier. No question about that, ladies and gentlemen. This is a tremendous tournament in the American Wrestling Federation. Stay with us. We're coming right back. Great wrestling action. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what a tremendous week with the American Wrestling Federation. The opening round is history. Tito Santana advances past Hercules. Yeah, and he's going to be taking on this man, Mr. Hughes. Also, Tommy Rich advances past Mr. USA. Yeah, but then he's got to go against another Patriot and Sergeant Slaughter. And Coco beware, ladies and gentlemen. We'll find out his opponent next week as the tournament continues. For Terry Taylor and Ken Resnick, this is Mick Hart. So long, everybody. You've made the right choice with the American Wrestling Federation. So until next week, 